Hey guys, today I wanted to give you a quick update on the seedlings, how they're doing and how I take care of them. Let me just give you a quick close-up of just a few of the things that I think are just doing amazing. I'll show you this tray right here. So these are the salvias and they're all looking amazing and it's time to pot them up into some bigger pots. I think I'm going to be putting them in these uh, three inch pots. I have them right here. Oh, oops. Three, four inch pots, I think. Yeah, four inch pots. I'll be transplanting them into these, but right now I don't have any soil. I just ordered some organic soil, uh, potting soil. Uh, to uh, pot up my seedlings and it hasn't come yet. It's been snowing for forever <laughs> over here and it's uh, what March 4th I think uh, today it's been it's been snowing since last night and last week it snowed like four times so uh, we are under snow still <laughs> and uh, and supposedly the truck was supposed to come today to bring in uh, the soil but I doubt they were able to they're able to go anywhere with this in this snowstorm and our driveway is full of snow so no soil for me <laughs> so I'm not gonna be able to pot up anything because I ran out of soil but I have all my pots washed up and they're over here waiting for things to be potted up let me give you a quick look here at the onions look at these beauties you know what let me bring the camera so that you can see the onions it's better Look at these onions. The red onions are doing great, and these are the seeds that I got from my gardener. Uh, the yes, yellow sweet Spanish onions are not doing so great. I didn't have uh, very good germination on them. This is the second year for these seeds, but I still got something. Uh, this tray is doing worse than the other one, uh, and I wish I seeded a little bit heavier. Uh, honestly, but uh, oh well, not a big deal. I was hoping that they would uh, do well and I would get a lot more seeds germinating. still have a few that are trying to germinate in here. These onions look like they are ready to be uh, cut at the top over here and I need to lift these lights also because they're starting to touch it. And let me give you an update here on the peppers. So, um, Oops, a couple mornings ago, these peppers germinated uh, before I got to them, and I had them upstairs so that they would germinate faster, but unfortunately, there was no light for them to see, uh, so a few of them stretched out like that over there. <laughs> it's not a big deal. They'll they'll be okay. Uh, the ones that germinated under the light are doing much better. You can see that. So these are the sweet peppers, I think. Yeah. No, these are the spicy peppers. Oh. Banana peppers, but yeah, these are the hot peppers. Okay, and the geranium over here had the dome over them because I had what you're gonna see right now this pink plume celery that was not germinating yet, and unfortunately, because of the extra humidity. Uh, it damaged some of the leaves, but they're they're still alive and I'm seeing new leaves on them and They didn't all germinate yet. Still have this one right here did not germinate and this I just got one seed in most of them so It's all right. I Was hoping we would get a lot more this what oh, that's the rose geranium That's funny. This is the one that I planted the most of it's okay. You can see the celery, the pink plume celery is starting to germinate. The celeric, celeric is not germinating at all. And look at these. It's so tiny. So tiny. <laughs> Salvia is doing amazing. Look at them. Oh, look at this one. They are loving their life. And I do have a few fungus gnats in here. So what I do for that is I have some um apple cider vinegar and some water and soap um well you don't need water but you just need apple cider vinegar and soap but what i do is because it dries out because of the fan uh i um 
spritz some water here every day to fill it back up and it's been catching the fungus gnats and uh, I need to change it and put, refresh it, put some new apple cider vinegar in here and some soap. I just put a dab of soap, uh, you don't need a lot of soap. The reason for the soap is to break the surface uh, tension of the water and allows the bugs to sink because uh, um, the insects can uh, sort of sit on the water and they don't sink so to cause them to sink you uh, add some soap and that soap breaks up the surface tension of the water and uh, allows the bugs to sink if you uh, f ever have filled uh, anything um, like a, cont a cup or a measuring cup or whatever with uh, uh, water and you see like a little bubble over the surface and that is imagine that as the um, uh, the surface tension so um, you're breaking that tension that the water has and allowing the bugs to sink in it uh, and it, it's working great uh, I have also some sticky um, what do you call them those yellow sticky tapes uh, but I have no idea where I put them um, so I am not using that and from my experience I haven't they haven't worked for me um, it seems that they work for some other people but not for me <laughs> I don't know why they don't work for me but anyways uh, this is what I'm doing for the fungus nuts and it's uh, working great and I do that in my kitchen and I thought hey why not try it over here and see what happens and it's catching them so that's working and everything is looking healthy and for these seedlings what I'm doing is I uh, am fertilizing them Oh, because they were all little, I was fertilizing them with half-strength fertilizer uh, once a week. But now that the salvia has a lot more leaves on it, I can start fertilizing it with full-strength fertilizer. But I don't want to do that yet until I transplant them into uh, some other pots because uh, then they're going to grow too big in these uh, uh, seed trays and um, I don't want to damage them when it's time to uh, transplant them because uh, when they are smaller it's a lot easier to transplant and um, if I had some more soil I would have probably transplanted them uh, earlier than they are this than the stage that they are in right now because it would be a lot easier and uh, for the onions and everything else and well the onions because those are the only thing that I can fertilize right now um, I am fertilizing them with half strength fertilizer once a week and I'm just trying to make sure also that the turmeric and the ginger stay moist because uh, if I want these to uh, start putting on some action uh, they have to stay moist uh, right now the root is developing and I'm not seeing any greens on any of them so I'm hoping that pretty soon we're gonna start seeing some greens and this room is cold and I do have the turmeric and the ginger on a heating mat uh, but um, I think that the heating mat is not hot enough for them it's only reaching to 73 degrees uh, because this room is cold and it's sitting on metal so um, I'm just hoping that they're growing underground um, and I don't want to mess with them because I don't want to damage anything um, when it's time to plant them outside then I'll be able to see what's happening and if nothing if nothing uh, is growing then that's okay I won't feel bad about it at least I would have given it a try with the store-bought ginger and I think it is best if you buy the uh, like ones from uh, uh, seed, seed companies uh, because you'll know that those are not sprayed with any growth inhibitors or anything of the sort and they're more likely to uh, grow uh, but uh, I kind of thought about it a little bit too late I should have ordered them earlier um, I might still be able to order them I don't know anything else like the geranium and the celery um, that does not have um, more than just the two sets of leaves that they have I will not fertilize until they start showing some growth on them uh, then I'll start fertilizing them with half strength fertilizer and every morning I come down here I make sure nothing is dry uh, because even though these trays hold water uh, the there are a lot of roots in these trays right now like the onions have 
really big roots right now uh, and the salvia are like just sucking up the water so I want to I try to make sure to come down here every morning and make sure that everything has water and if any of the surfaces dry out I take this water mister and I miss its surface and uh, I also and I also give them some water in the trays so that they can soak it up. I also have, do I show you this? Do I not? I did a mistake. <laughs> it's a terrible mistake and I'm feeling terrible because of it, but uh, I wish I didn't do it. So when I brought the lavender down here, I covered it with a dome and I should not have, I should not have covered it with a dome because what happened is the dome created humidity and it started dripping on the lavender and a lot of them started to die uh, and rot. Now some of them are still alive, like I have probably 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 that are still alive, 13 out of the 24. That was a dumb mistake and I would never do it again. <laughs> uh, last year I just put them upstairs and I left them upstairs and I didn't bring them down here. I left them in front of the window and um, they were fine. Why did I do this? Why did I bring them down here? I thought that they would be better off under the light. Um, and they, I mean, the light is great for them, but the humidity, the humidity killed them. And I should have thought about it. I mean, lavender does not like humidity. Oh, anyways, don't do my mistake. If you have lavender cuttings, don't put a dome over them. Um, if they are in this stage. And I th I've never put domes over them and I don't know what got into me to put a dome over them. <laughs> I was thinking they're gonna dry out so fast because of the fan is blowing and I need to protect these cuttings but that was so, so dumb that was such a mistake uh, I'm actually thinking of starting lavender from seed uh, I think that would probably be a lot faster than starting them from cutting and this way I can also get whatever variety I want I'm thinking of trying to grow the Monstead lavender because I do want to create a huge drift in the front and I'm actually going to be changing the front bed a little bit. Uh, I've been looking at it from our upstairs windows and I'm not liking the shape. It seems as if it has deformed over time and I just want to make it to be just kind of an easy circle kind of shape and it's just gonna go into um, and in the driveway kind of and uh, you'll know what I'm talking about when, when it's time to edge that bed. Right now I can't do anything outside it's full of snow, uh, lots of snow. For these onions also uh, pretty soon maybe like in a few days I'm going to be giving them a haircut and I'm gonna um, cut them down to around three inches and uh, that's just uh, going to stop them from flopping over and also it's going to keep them kind of at bay because I don't have a lot of space over here under these grow lights. Uh, this is it for the seedlings and the sweet peppers and the uh, eggplants have still uh, still did not germinate yet and I planted these around February, February 28th, something like that and I'm still not seeing any action yet on them and I did leave them upstairs for a while uh, until I to keep them kind of warm so that it would be easier to germinate um, but they haven't germinated yet and I wanted to bring them down here so that the thing that happened with the hot peppers does not happen with the rest of these because I don't want them to be all stretched out I just want them to germinate under the grow light and uh, be nice and have beautiful stems and not long and leggy and all that. Um, so this is it for the seedlings and um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative and if you have any comments or questions leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.